it around. I, I was doing the same thing. I was shouting, Go Shanti, go Shanti, you can do it. So, parang, uh, immediately, dun ko na realize na supporting your brother or your sister uh, isn't just about shouting. It's about praying as well uh, for her to do good. And I did that. And now you're here as first runner of Miss Eco International. So, we are so. Um, Proud of you and congratulations and welcome home. Justin, thank you so much. And truly, our spirit of pioneering, of being a family and being a community as one helping out and supporting each other is right there. Really paving the way, making sure that we all win together. Thank you so much, Justin. Of course, next we have our Mr. Filipinas Man of the Year 2024, Mr. Anthony Kalinam. Anthony? Hi there, Chantel. Welcome home and wow, first runner-up in your international pageants. What, despite the challenges, despite what's, you know, the other things that have come up, what a feat, everyone. Um, I think when we saw that, when we sent you off, we knew that, me personally, I knew that she would do well because she has a strong advocacy. Like a true pageant queen, she really stands behind her uh, her advocacy, behind what she's, she's passionate about, even going as far as to recycle her own clothes for the international competition. So she had, really she had everything in my eyes to uh, to complete the, uh, you know, to be the person that the organization is looking for. But anyway, I won't say too much more because I think the other guys have really well summed up what, uh, what Chantel has achieved and the well-deserved place that she has. So. Uh, just want to thank you again and wish you all the best and welcome you back to your home country, the Philippines. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. All right, we do the photo together with our brothers from Mr. Filipinas. Please do join us right here. Thank you so much for all your messages. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Oh, we're really, the lady in red. Here and the side. Over there. Here and the mom. Here and the mom. Guys, here, one, two, three. Perfect. Perfect. And happy birthday. Alright, I think it's time to move forward. How about a big hand once again for our guys from Mr. Filipinas? Move up. You want to do that, James? Maybe later. We're going to be eating and drinking. We're going to be doing the dance later on. But yet again, a round of applause for Mr. Filipinas, guys. Thank you so much, guys, for all the love and support. Because this time, I'm going to be pulling on stage a good friend as well for his. Days ago, like that. Um, we were sending you off, and what's so beautiful was I saw your dream unfold. All your plans, you were a trendsetter in Miss Eagle International, and I truly appreciated the fact that she had a vision, and every time that she came out, those weren't just like random outfits. Those were well thought out, and that came from her passion and from her heart. And it's because of that that made her truly like a shining example of what beauty queens should aspire to be. You don't just just go there, wake up, and you know just let a team tell you what to wear, tell you what to do. What she demonstrated is truly an empowered woman who knew what she wanted, and. That was in full showcase mode in Miss Eco International from the beginning to the end. And of course, it's also a testament of how she worked so well and collaborated with the creative teams, the designers. And I'm sure they, they were so happy for her, but they were also happy with her as they collaborated. And your fashion dreams have come true and maybe that is a precursor to what's gonna happen in the future of your bigger dreams that are going to come true. And you know, you've set such a high standard for the rest of your the Miss Philippine sisters. <laughs> Guys, for Turner of Sean. <laughs> and maybe that's my name Sean. No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> it's not the pressure. No, but allow her position and her accomplishment to be an inspiration. And you are an inspiration. Thank you so much on the behalf of the organization. We are very proud of you. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that question. Uh, do you mind repeating that question, actually? I'm so sorry. So I think just to, I, if, if I sum, summarize it correctly, from top five to top two, what, what is running in your mind during that time? What's in your mind? Okay, so I had a lot going on in my mind that night. And one was what Sir B always said, the girls who win are the girls who have fun. And I had fun that night. Second, what was going on in my head was what my dear Tita Jerry always tells me. He always says, never to expect, but to hope. And every single time I was last to be called, which is like twice or thrice, I was sweating and shaking, but I would tell myself, okay, if my journey ends here, I'm happy. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. I don't need to win, I'm happy. I'm happy, my eyes would be twitching. <laughs> Again, every single time, they would call me in last, and I would say, oh my goodness, this is God's sign. That while I shouldn't expect, I am so right to hope, and I am so right to hope that there's that my journey doesn't end here. And truthfully, my journey did not end at top 21, it did not end at top 10, it did not end at top 5. I expected to be, every single time, they called fourth runner-up, third runner-up, second runner-up, I was thinking, okay, this might be the time they call Philippines, okay, okay. And then they did it. And they did it again. And then they didn't call me again. And all of a sudden, I was holding hands with Miss Ukraine. And it's like it did not sink in. I couldn't believe that I was holding hands in the top two. It was just me and one more girl left. And it was just such a mind-blowing feeling to be standing there, not just as Miss Philippines, but in the top two. That was such a mind-blowing thought to me. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that question. Sometimes you're the right choice. Sometimes you feel that people don't believe you to be the right choice. And going into the competition, I felt, okay, I'm just another country to them. And then a week later, when our preliminary interviews happened, and I got to speak to the judges, suddenly they started calling me by my name. They started calling me Chantal, no longer Philippines. And I only realized that the night before finals, I was like, oh, yeah, they, they would call me Chantal, not just Miss Philippines. And I think in what charmed them rather was in prelims, I really got to speak about myself, about my heart, about my advocacy. The first question they asked me was, tell us about your advocacy, tell us why you're here. And I told them about the livelihood program that I work with and how I was inspired by my grandfather who worked not just with the poor, but for the poor. And I told them that there's no such thing as sustainability if we cannot blend that with accessibility. And that's quite literally what I said. I told them that when you drive by the slums in my country, how could you possibly ask these people to invest in green energy, to invest in metal straws, to invest in recycling, when they can't even invest in a roof above their heads? Amen. And so my cause was always to bring the poor and the impoverished to the light and to find solutions for them too, to include them in our future too. And I think that's what really charmed them. That I wasn't just, you know, the, for, the, for the beautiful and the glittery and the glamorous, but also for the poor. And I think that's what really spoke to their hearts. Such a lovely answer, really make an impact because you carry your story, they felt it. In my mind though, I was not thinking about when do I peak, when do I do this, when do I give this outfit, when do I wear this, when do I wear that. It was not that strategic if I'm honest with you. Frankly speaking, I knew I came into the competition with a slight disadvantage being that I was late with some other girls too and also that also that the Philippines had had produced so many winners from Miss Eagle International already, I felt as though I was at a slight disadvantage. But with that being said, my goal, my strategy rather, was not thinking about when to peak, but just consistently peaking. That was my thought process. I told myself every single day, I today would be the best I could possibly be. 
I would do the best that I could possibly do, and that would start by, for example, my roommates would be asleep by 10 p.m., and I would be there curling my extensions, straightening my extensions, laying out my outfit, planning the content that I was going to shoot, all of these things. And if you look at my Instagram, it wasn't very, it, on one hand, it wasn't um, careless, but on the other hand, I wasn't strategizing in the sense, when can I put out this, when can I put out that? Every single day I was just pumping out something new, something that I could be proud of. And that was my strategy, to be proud of myself every single day. Thanks, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's just a celebration every moment.